In December 2017, Dan Ellsberg joins us to talk about his book, The Doomsday Machine, Confessions of a Nuclear War Planner. In 1961, Dan Ellsberg was a consultant for the Pentagon and the White House, where he drafted President John F. Kennedy's Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara's plans for nuclear war. So you made copies of top secret reports for plans about nuclear war years before you copied the Pentagon Papers right. and released them to the press? Essentially my notes and sometimes verbatim excerpts, not the entire plans themselves, <clears throat> but on plans that were then unknown to the president, to begin with, to President Kennedy. I briefed his aide, McGeorge Bundy, in his first month in office on the nature of the plans and some of the other problems, like the delegation of authority to theater commanders for nuclear war by President Eisenhower, which was fairly shocking to uh, McGeorge Bundy, even though Kennedy chose to renew that delegation, as other presidents have. But I was given the job of uh, improving the Eisenhower plans, which was not a very high bar, actually, at that time, because they were, on their face, the worst plans in the history of warfare. A number of people who saw them, but very few civilians ever got a look at them. In fact, the Joint Chiefs couldn't really get the targets out of General LeMay at the Strategic Air Command. And there was a good reason for that. They were insane. Uh, they called for first strike plans, which was by order of President Eisenhower. He didn't want any plan for limited war of any kind with the Soviet Union under any circumstances, because that would enable the Army to ask for enormous numbers of divisions or even tactical nuclear weapons to deal with the Soviets. So he required that the only plan for fighting Soviets under any circumstances, such as an encounter in the Berlin Corridor, the access to West Berlin, or over Iran, which was already a, a flashpoint at that point, or Yugoslavia, if they'd gone in. However the war started, uh, with an uprising in East Germany, for example, however it got started, Eisenhower's directed plan was for all-out war in a first initiation of nuclear war, assuming the Soviets had not used nuclear weapons. And that plan called, in our first strike, for hitting every city, actually every town, over 25,000, in the USSR, and every city in China. A war with Russia would inevitably involve immediate attacks on every city in China. And in the course of doing this, <coughs> pardon there were no reserves. Everything was to be thrown as soon as it was available. It was a vast trucking operation of thermonuclear weapons over to the USSR, but not only the USSR. The captive nations, the East Europe satellites in the Warsaw Pact, were to be hit in their air defenses, which were all near cities, their transport points, their communications of any kind. So they, were BT, uh, they were to be annihilated as well. Uh, I couldn't believe, when I saw these, that the Joint Chiefs actually had ever calculated how many people they would actually kill in this course. In fact, colonels who were friends of mine in the air staff told me they'd never seen an actual figure for the uh, total casualties. Uh, we had exact figures of the number of targets and uh, how many planes would be needed and every sort of thing, many calculations, but not victims. So I drafted a question which the aide to McGeorge Bundy, Bob Comer, sent to the Joint Chiefs in the name of the president. And the question was, in the event of your carrying out your general nuclear war plans, which were first strike plans, how many will die? First I asked, in the USSR and China alone. In the thought that, by the way, they'd be embarrassed to discover, to say, we have to have more time. We've never really calculated that. I was wrong, uh, and my friends were wrong in the Air Force. They came back with an answer very quickly. 325 million people in the USSR and China alone. Well, <clears throat> then I asked, all right, how many altogether? And a few days later, 100 million in East Europe, the captive nations, another 100 million in West Europe, our allies, from our own strikes by fallout depending on which way the wind blew. And however the wind blew, a third hundred million in adjoining countries, neutral countries like Austria and Finland, or Afghanistan then, Japan, northern India, and so forth, a total of 600 million people. That was a time, by the way, when the population of the world was three billion. 
And that was an underestimate of their casualties, a hundred holocausts. It was very clear that uh, they hadn't included, I hadn't asked actually, what would Russian retaliation be against us and against West Europe. Uh, they were thought at that time, wrongly, to have hundreds of weapons against the U.S., but they did have hundreds of weapons against West Europe, no question. West Europe would go under any circumstances. If we were defending West Europe, Germany, for example, we were planning to destroy the continent in order to save it. 600 million, that was 100 holocausts. And when I held the piece of paper in my hand that had that figure, that they'd sent out unembarrassedly, you know, proudly to the president, here's what we will do, I thought, this is the most evil plan that has ever existed. It's insane. The weapons, the machinery that will carry this out, this is no hypothetical plan like Herman Kahn might have uh, conceived at the doomsday machine that he thought up at the Rand Corporation as my colleague. This was an actual war plan for how we would use the existing weapons, so many of which I'd seen already that time. Pentagon Papers whistleblower Dan Ellsberg speaking on Democracy Now! in December 2017 about his book, The Doomsday Machine, Confessions of a Nuclear War Planner.